We are back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild with the Beginner Series once again, and today we're going to get ourselves some DLC rifles for the very first time in this series, aside from the 6.5, which is equivalent to the 270. But before we do that, let's kind of show how we got to the point of having 72,986 credits, as well as being level 20. I have spent a few hours the last couple days shooting Red Deer over and over and over again, and then getting a couple tents so that I could do it a little bit more efficiently and quickly, and we have slowly built our way up to the point that we're at now. This is why I've always said Red Deer are such a phenomenal way of earning money, especially if you're hunting them on Tiawaroa. There's just so many of them. There's so many in each and every single drink zone as well. It's not just a fact of there being a lot of Red Deer on the map. There's a lot of them condensed in very small areas. Combined with the fact that almost every single good hotspot for Red Deer on Tiawaroa has a lodge right next to it, and when you've got very high populations of a specific animal that gives a lot of cash, uh, plus very good accessible areas that have lodges next to them. That is just a recipe for very good money farming. And that is exactly what Tiawaroa Red Deer are. And that is how we were able to get up to over 70,000 credits in just a few hours of hunting. And during this time, we did manage to get our very first rare and our very first diamond for Red Deer. Now, unfortunately, I did delete the footage for the albino red deer that I killed. It's unfortunate, but I was going through all of my footage and I was playing through it and I was like, why do I still have this gameplay right here? There's nothing happening. Well, I forgot that there was an albino like right in the middle of the hour and a half recording of me just shooting red deer. So sadly, I deleted that without realizing what it was until it was too late, but I did get the diamond recorded regardless. So we at least have that and you guys will be seeing that now. Most likely it was a pretty good diamond. I do believe it was max weight if I'm not mistaken, but scored very low for being a max weight diamond. So it's still a diamond red deer. Nonetheless, I have not taxed it yet as I wanted to save up all of our cash. But uh, we still have it, and it was still a cool thing to come across. And just the fact that we were able to get a couple of red deer like that with less than 100 kills on them is pretty cool. Speaking of that, let's take a look at the latest harvest. You guys can kind of see how long it was taking me to get some of these down. So it wasn't super quick, but after a few hours of doing this, we did have enough money to uh, get at least a few tents. I think that's most likely what we're going to spend it on and then probably get ourselves a couple of the DLC rifles like I was mentioning and also some ammo to go along with them. We also can go into the hunting profile and see that we have killed 227 different animals as well as two diamonds. So we do have two diamonds, the elk and now the red deer and hopefully we can add to that count today while also getting to try out some of the DLC weapons for the first time in this series. And the reason that we waited until episode, I believe, seven to do this is because I wanted to get a bit into this series before we started using the DLC rifles to kind of, I guess, simulate somebody getting into the game, learning that they like it at about level 20 like we are now, and deciding they want to drop a couple bucks on getting a good DLC rifle. So what we're going to do is we are going to get the 308 as well as the 303 as I think they are a couple of the better rifles. So this is basically to simulate you finally got enough money to get the 303 from Tiawaroa and then you also bought the DLC for the ARs because I do think it is the best weapon pack. The modern rifles weapon pack is by far the best one to get if you are early in the game. It is just a lifesaver. But we're also going to buy the 303 because it does have a little bit more power and can be a pretty good option as well and we're going to use both of them today. And with the remaining 32,000, let's go ahead and get one tent, as well as probably getting some ammunition. So let's go ahead and get some 303 polymer tips. We're probably going to buy about 100 of these. That should be good right there. And then we're also going to do that with the 308 poly tips. Let's get about 100 of them, maybe slightly less as we are a little bit short on cash. And I do want to be able to reset the time. I also did decide to pick up the Sunberg 454 because this is a handgun that you actually do get for free. And whenever you start the game, you'll be able to purchase the uh, soft point ammunition, which is right uh, here. 450 for jacketed hollow point. So I guess it's a hollow point, not a soft point, but it's essentially the same thing. 
Let's just do a quick little basic paint job for 60 coins on this 308 and then also do the same thing for the 303. You can honestly make them look pretty good with just some basic uh, paints. You don't really need anything super fancy and you can have a somewhat good looking rifle. Uh, to be honest, I think we're just going to do this. That's only 30 credits and it looks pretty solid. We also did earn a couple more skill points and perk points and for the skills I decided to put one into locate tracks and then one of them into soft feet. As for the perks, we decided to put both of them into zeroing, so we now have the different zeroing distances down in the bottom right, which is going to be very good for making longer shots and uh, some of the shorter shots as well. And for today's video, we decided to return to Leighton Lakes to kind of check up on some of our herds here for the blacktail deer, as there was uh, quite a bit of blacktail that we shot, uh, or blacktail herds that we shot deer out of. And I'd like to kind of go through here again and see if we've got any good respawns and also maybe check some of these other lakes over here and see if maybe we can find ourselves a diamond blacktail as uh, that is one of the easier species to hunt when you first start the game and it is a pretty cool looking diamond so we might try to go for something like that unlock a little bit more of the map as well. Well, we've got a black tailed deer up there running from us. Actually, I don't think it's running from us. I think it's kind of running to us. But still, let's get her down. That is going to be about a thousand cash, and we are basically broke, so anything helps at this point. There we go. There is our little black tailed deer doe. We did end up getting vertebrae, unfortunately, but that really doesn't matter too much. It's still going to give us a little bit of cash, and that's kind of the whole point of taking her down. Well, we once again have a little blacktail doe across this lake right here. We just managed to get over here. As you can see, I ATV'd about half the way. And then when I got to about four to 500 away, I decided to hop off so that I wouldn't spook them. And uh, now we've got a chance to take down another doe for a little bit more cash. The 308 is honestly such a step up from the 6.5 that we are just killing things so much quicker now. And it also has more than just one round, unlike the 7mm. It really is, in my opinion, the best weapon pack that you can start out by purchasing. I really do think that it is the best first weapon pack to purchase, as it's got a lot of different varieties of guns. It's got a 22, it's got a 308, it's got a 223. The Modern Rifles weapon pack is just a great start if you're looking to buy one. And there we go, another 776 cash. That is a double lung and it dropped it on the spot. Really is such a massive step up above the 6.5. And because this is typically a decent place for Blacktail, let's drop a tent right here. That way we can at least come back here and check on the respawns and maybe some of the ones that didn't show up as typically there's more than just one zone here. So I imagine we've got a couple zones around the rest of the lake. But uh, until we figure that out, let's go to one of the other lakes and check on some of the respawns from some of the blacktail that we killed in the first few episodes. You know, ever since the last update, animals spook a lot easier, so we really have to pick and choose what we're going to target first. And I think in this case, there's just three level threes around this uh, lake from what I could tell, and then a uh, doe or two here and there. So I think we're going to start out with this guy right here. And then if we can, get that doe as well. That looked like a hit, but was it good? It's hard to say. Well, it looks like we did end up getting vitals on her as she didn't go too far. That is going to be a 130 scoring level three blacktail deer just under 1000 cash. Again, blacktail are not bad for money. If you're just starting out and you're on Leighton Lakes, they are a pretty solid option. I mean, even a doe gives over 800. We've got a couple more bucks out here. I think we're gonna try and get both of them if possible. It's gonna be tough. But I do think that we can do it if we are quick enough. Unfortunately, uh, they dart off way too fast to get a second shot now. But we managed to get a shot into it as it was running. And now it's down. And that one is hit as well. This also really does just go to show how quickly you burn through money early on in the Hunter Call of the Wild. There's always something that you need to purchase. There's always time resets that you have to do. There's always trophies that you want to taxidermize. And now we've got the weapon customization as well. It's, uh, it's going to be hard to hang on to money early on. I can definitely see that. It's going to be even harder than it already was. So we need to take down as many animals as we can possibly see. Which means pretty much every blacktail we find today is going down. This should be the last of the ones that we took down, 118.31. Unfortunately, that doe we did not hit vitally, so she probably won't die for a little bit. But we got the first three that we shot. 
Oh my gosh, and as we come back to this location, we've got ourselves an albino doe. This is the area that we shot that doe at as we ran over, or I guess drove over to this location. And uh, yeah, we shot one doe here earlier. Now there is another one on the other side, and it's an albino. This is exactly what I was talking about when we went here the first time. There's typically more than just one zone, and usually we've got at least two or three zones full of black-tailed deer. This one didn't necessarily have zones full of black-tailed deer, but we did have another zone, and it's actually an albino doe, so that is pretty cool. And you know what? I think the 303 deserves to be the gun that gets to take it down. This will be the first shot fired with the 303. And first, I want to check over here because, yeah, I was going to say, I thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye, and it is a doe. So I guess this lake is just full of does for us. But that's definitely not going to uh, mean that it's going to be the same for everybody. Some people will have bucks here. That's just part of the RNG of Call of the Wild. But we managed to get ourselves an albino here, which is pretty amazing. Especially since this is our very first time going to this lake, aside from that one doe that we shot over there. And this is exactly why I cannot stress enough that anytime that you guys get a new map or start the game or anything like that, be very thorough in searching it because you never know how many initial spawn rares or diamonds you may have on your map. I've seen quite a few people tell me that they searched their whole map and got multiple diamonds off of it, so it's definitely possible to get more than one diamond as an initial spawn. Uh, same with rares. A after all, it is a quite random thing and everybody's map is going to generate differently when they open it for the very first time. So I definitely recommend checking the drink time for every single species and being super thorough with uh, checking the whole map. And there she is, our little albino black-tailed deer doe. I just realized that pretty much every single trophy that we've killed during this series has been a female black-tailed deer. We've killed an albino and a piebald black-tailed deer doe, and the only other trophies that we've really got was a mella mallard and then a diamond red deer, a diamond elk, and a albino red deer. So between red deer and blacktail, that's been the majority of our trophies that we've killed. And I guess it kind of makes sense. We've hunted them more than anything else. So I guess naturally we would get more of them. But let's save the harvest. We're not going to tax it yet as again, it's kind of expensive and we don't have a lot of money. The 303 is honestly a phenomenal rifle, and if you guys do not want to purchase the uh, modern rifle pack, you could honestly just buy the Tiawaroa DLC and then buy the 303 for 40k in-game currency, since it does come with Tiawaroa, and you'll do plenty of damage with that. You don't necessarily need the 308, it's typically just more efficient because it is a faster firing rifle and does about the same damage as the 303, but you could totally get along with just using the 303. Another lookout tower down, and soon we will be able to unlock another outpost as well, since there is one very close to this lookout tower. And like I've said before, anytime you go to the top of one of these lookout towers, just scout around a little bit. You never know what you could find. I just heard a black-tailed deer, so I think we're going to try and take it down if we can spot it, but you can definitely spot a lot of animals from these lookout towers, so even if it's not really your priority to be hunting while you're looking for your lookout towers, I definitely recommend at least taking a couple moments just to look around whenever you get to the top of one. Well, that would be her right there. Let's see if we can get the shot into her. I think this should be good. But just in case, one more to take her down. There she is. Let's see what the first shot was looking like. So the first one actually hit way lower than I thought it would. So it's a good thing that we took that second shot, otherwise we probably would not have got her down as quick as she did go down. So that's good. This is one of those situations where the follow-up was 100% necessary. And there we go, we finally have this outpost unlocked, and we are one step closer to getting this map fully unlocked. Well, that is a very uh, common occurrence ever since the update dropped to release New England Mountains. We have lost so many things to the beavers, and unfortunately, I, I don't have any tents on me, so... Yeah, we're kind of out of luck. There is an outpost up here, though, so we might just run up there and try to unlock that, because the beavers are wrecking our tents and tree stands and tripods and really just anything that they want to. And there we go, another outpost, this time because a beaver took down our tent. Gotta love it, but at least it pushed me to go open up this outpost because I wasn't really intending on doing it quite yet. But, I mean, since we needed to, we might as well do it and now we can head up to this lake right here as it's also a place that black-tailed deer can be. 
You know, something a lot of people do not talk about that I really feel is a good thing to mention is whenever you're hunting at night and you do not have all of the night vision stuff, it typically is best to turn off your light whenever you are looking through binoculars or a scope as everything is going to be much clearer because the second you turn on that light, things get kind of blurry and foggy. Well, we're going to end up spooking them off, but there is some black tailed deer over here. Let's uh, try to get a quick look at them to see if any of them are of any size and how many of them there even is here. Well, unfortunately, it seems like the only blacktail that are here were on the side that we just ran up on. So there's nothing left. We can at least check them out, though. That one's a female. And I'm going to assume the other one is probably a buck. I mean, I, I guess there was more than two here. Maybe even more than three. Yeah, there we go. So that is the buck. 67 to 81 so nothing huge nothing too crazy so I don't really think we missed out uh oh here we go well that is gonna do it for her so we didn't go home empty handed I thought for sure we weren't gonna get anything at this lake as we spooked them off but this one just so happened to give us a shot beautiful Thank you all so much for being here, but before we end the video, I did want to real quickly ask you guys a question. What should we do in some of the future episodes of this series? Because there is a ton of different things that we could do. There's a ton of maps that we have yet to go to. There's a ton of guns we have yet to use. And there's a ton of, like, different things that we have yet to even try. So, let me know in the comments some things you want to see in the future of this series. I know Verhonga Savannah is probably going to be a pretty popular request, so we're probably already going to do an episode based around Verhonga Savannah. But as for when that'll happen, it's hard to say. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you liked about this episode. Let me know if you've been enjoying the series. And let me know, like I said, what you want to see in the future of this series as well. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.